Well, it's been a long wait, but Halo Escalation 3 is finally here. Without further ado, let's delve right in. Our issue starts with Lasky and Smart and Ray taking out the jamming device preventing off-world communications, and Ray does it in classic Halo style, blowing up a plasma coil. It's straight out of Halo multiplayer and represents something I love about this series, a knowledge of the Halo fanbase. It's not to say that the other comics are ignorant of the fans, but Escalation, more than any other, knows what Halo fans want to see. I should also note that I made a slight mistake in my last review saying that we saw Halo 3 and Halo 4 era Banshees side by side. It seems that what I thought to be a Halo 4 Banshee was in fact a Space Banshee. Still, while nice to see the Space Banshee, I wanted to rectify that mistake. The scene also features the Halo 4 style Kigar of Eevee-ish Descent. You know, just some fun easter eggs. Moving on, Lasky is finally able to communicate with Infinity, and not a moment too soon as Sangheili and Jiro Hana's ships are ready to move against each other. He is thankfully able to convince both groups of the very real threat on Elon 4. Unfortunately, all the reinforcements are too far away to do anything about the incoming Covenant threat. On board Gajat's ship, we get a little insight into the politics of the current Halo universe. It seems that Gajat is part of the Covenant Remnant, but he is not necessarily working under Jewel Umdama's orders at the moment. At the very least, Umdama is unaware of Gajat working with humans and Jiral Hane. Elsewhere, Palmer, Hood, the Arbiter, and Lettuce enter the readout only to discover Spartan Scrugg's betrayal when he takes Hood hostage. When Palmer accuses him of being an insurrectionist, he berates her, encouraging her to think about what's really going on in the galaxy. Why did the UNSC blame the New Phoenix incident on the Covenant Remnant? Why hasn't the Arbiter been able to secure peace over the last five years? A nice nod to Kilo 5, of course. And the big question, where is the Chief, and why hasn't anyone heard from him since the events of Halo 4? A nice nod to the potential story of Halo Xbox One. Palmer, basically fed up with Scruggs' shit, apologizes before shooting Hood in the leg, freeing him and allowing her to take down Scruggs. I have to say, this is probably one of the best Palmer scenes to date. She kicks Scruggs' ass and kills him with a stab to the throat. This scene also answers a question many fans have been asking since Halo 4 was first previewed. Where do Spartan Force keep their knives? The answer? A compartment in the forearm plating. After the fight, Lasky warns Palmer about the incoming Covenant threat and orders her to do whatever it takes to ensure the safety of the diplomats. This of course forces Palmer to run while other Spartans, namely DeMarco, stay behind to manually operate a tyrant AA platform, much to Palmer's dismay. This scene is kind of ironic, Palmer being given orders that she doesn't like, considering her remarks about Osmond's orders to kill Halsey and Spartan Ops. Anyway, as DeMarco covers them, Palmer and company escape in a modified T-29 Shadow, something we haven't seen in action since Halo 2. Above the planet, the Sangheili, Jirohana, and human forces are closing in on the Covenant Remnant, prompting Gajat to retreat for the moment. On the planet, DeMarco takes out a Banshee tailing the Shadow before being taken out himself. DeMarco was always something of a frat boy in Spartan Ops. But he got serious when he needed to. Here, he goes out like a badass, and the art reminds me of Carter's sacrifice in Halo Reach. Battered and bleeding, DeMarco makes a final kill before falling in the line of duty. The comic comes to a close with a funeral service for the fallen Spartans, with Lasky making remarks about the absurdity of Oni's policy that Spartans never die. After the service, Lasky and Palmer briefly meet up. Palmer, of course, angry about her dead comrades, and Lasky guilt-ridden over the choice he had to make. The final page is Lasky talking with Hood, who notes that only somebody way above Scruggs' pay grade could have tipped off the Covenant about the location of the peace talks. The notion, as Hood puts it, scares the hell out of me. Boy, what an issue. We started with some great action, but the comic quickly gets serious and heavy. With the death of a character we got to know well in Spartan Ops and many more mysteries than answers, Escalation is going to keep fans interested for a long time to come. The next issue, as indicated by the bottom of the final page, will bring the story of the Spirit of Fire into the modern era. And according to issue 4's description, Lasky, with the age of Petra Janishik, will be looking into just how deep the UNSC has been infiltrated. Maybe we'll finally find out who that mysterious human working with Gajat is. As I keep saying, Escalation is turning out great and I cannot wait for the next issue to release. For now, this has been Halo Cannon, and we'll see you next time Spartans.